Hello everyone, I'm A745 and welcome to AbyssalChronicles.com. Today we're playing through the upcoming Tales of Crestoria for iOS and Android. We got this lovely opportunity from Bandai Namco Entertainment to play through the test build of the game, so here's our little inside look. Joining me today are AC staff members Dimension Slip, Kaffi, Kayam, Kiki, Hachiro, and Amy. Hello, so I'm Slip, Assistant Admin to Abby for Abyssal Chronicles. Hey, this is Kathy. Hi, this is Amy. Hey, it's Kayam. Hi, Kiki here. Hi, Hachiro here. So just a little background on how I'm playing the game right now. I'm using a phone running an Android 10 with around 6GB of RAM and an octa-core max 2.84GHz CPU. My phone storage capacity is at 128GB. With the game installed, I have around 45GB available. And if you'll notice, the screen is kind of wide. Um, I'm recording the game at 2340 by 1080p resolution and at 30fps. I go higher but my phone will crash, I'm sorry. That said, Let's start. So the game begins prompting you to accept some terms of service, link your account, give a username. You're then prompted to download a total of 1.8 gig of data. The game installer from the Play Store was at around uh, 85 MB. So roughly the game is, let's say, all around 2 gigabytes all in all. Surprisingly enough, the game has a lot of animated cutscenes for the main story. So our hero Kanata and our heroine Mizala both commit a crime in order to protect each other and they are both condemned for this and are branded as transgressors. So as previously revealed in the final trailer of the game, the opening theme is Howling for Honey by Gesu no Kiwami Otome. So first off, let me just remind our viewers that this is a test build for Tales of Crestoria, meaning you may see a few typos here and there, a few Japanese characters in the supposedly English version and all that. Hopefully this is just for this build and will be fixed once open beta or the final game is out. Crestoria's story actually starts off with the battle tutorial led by Tales of Fantasia's Crest Albane. We're not going to include that much here since Bandai Namco Entertainment released footage of this in the earlier Tales of Crestoria live streams. So upon completion of the tutorial, you get one select summon among a few select Legacy Tales characters. So unlike in Tales of the Rays, where the illustrations are a look back in particular scenes in Tales games, the illustrations in Tales of Crestoria mostly seem original. And they are gorgeous. I'm not allowed to show all of them sadly, but take it from us, they're great. That's a cute animation. Okay, so this is your uh, home screen, which is actually customizable, which I'll show later. Um, like your typical gacha game, the game has your daily, weekly event missions that you can complete for gold or gold gleam stones, like elixirs and all that. There's also this uh, time box feature which gives you rewards every few minutes and presents for the next day. Uh, before 
we start, I just want to show you guys. Um, so these are the available gacha banners so far. Um, which I'm assuming will be available on day one. From the gacha banners, you can get memoria stones and characters. So depending on the rarity, uh, some memoria stones will include the characters. Your So there are three rarities available, SSR, SR, and R. Your SSR memoria stones would include the character, the mystic art, as well as the SSR uh, illustration, which are gorgeous. Then your SR characters would include just the character with no mystic art, no SSR illustration. And then there's, there are also the R memoria stones, which are just the memoria stones, which are equipable for stat boosts. The character models are actually really good. So uh, this is Kanata. That looks so smooth. Ah, he's cute. If you click them, they speak. So just take a look at the characters we're allowed to look at. Okay. Then Mizula here. The art is really good. Oh. And vicious. Oops, sorry. Actually, a lot of them have a lot to say. Yes, a lot to say. So I'm assuming these are available on day one. Ah, uh, Cress. The models are so good. They don't have subtitles for these parts, though. Luke? His hair looks so good! Cut it! Definitely the best hair. <laughs> I think they're not using the models from the actual games. Because a different sets from each model, like Yuma is very PS3 and velvet looks like. Oh yeah. my god, she has the comb, I love it! The what? Oh, she does? I can't... Yeah, when she was doing her little gesture there, she was holding Laffy's comb. I didn't see it, I'll do it again. Oh, she did something else. Do it again! There we go. Wow, it's there, it's there. Ah, uh, interesting. Anyone else? Can we see Lila with her, like, crazy long hair? Lila? Yeah, it's similar to her sister. Yeah. I can't get over how their hair and their clothes move so fluidly. Do you want to see Kaius as well to see how he's rendered? Kaius, there you go. Daijina mono? Hmm, it's my most favorite pendant, but ah, for you, I'm not I think we can all agree that this was worth the wait with how much effort that they put into this. Yeah, they really did these models justice. That's awesome. So there are a lot of R characters. It's really extensive up to the villains. But again, from what I've played, R Memoria Stones don't give you a character. Oh my god, that's a lot. This looks seriously oh amazing. Generals? Everyone, actually. Almost everyone. Oh, I think they've got almost everyone. At least the playable characters. Before we get to fighting, I just want to show you guys. So within the game, there's a chat function with these adorable stickers. Is that always on? Are you constantly seeing messages pop up? Uh, not really, no. Okay. 
Okay? They're already in English and they're adorable. Aww. <laughs> I really love the well played. What's Korea? Mizella loves meat. Yeah, apparently Mizella loves meat. It's not my fault. <laughs> Go to the menu, you'll get a history of four tales. Uh, it follows the Japan calendar, like all the releases, events, milestones, the Tales Festival, Ooh. anniversaries, launch of the Tales Channel. Oh, that's awesome! They also have the anime versions with the short summaries. There's also a character list, and they include even the very minor characters. They translated even the bios. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. And mind you, everything's from the Japanese version. Alright, so game time. So far from the main story, from what I've seen, everything is voiced. Side stories from what I've played Oh, it's not. so pretty! There are no event stories, so I wouldn't know on that one, and... So when you start a stage, you're prompted to choose a party as well as to add a support from random players on your friends list. It's usually set by default to recommend the element that will be strong against the enemies for that stage and you earn friend points. If you don't choose a friend support, the fourth slot can be one of your own characters. The sub-characters at the right are set to replace any character that dies. So technically, a uh, fight can have a default of 4 characters from your party plus an additional 2 who, you know, come in in case someone dies. You can also add a meal, which you can make from cooking. These have additional effects such as increasing Is HP, it? attack power, and all that. Uh, I can move the camera anywhere. If you're bored, you can just auto. You can also pick a character. You can see it from their viewpoint. The most character attacks first, but of course, tapping on the character's portrait will allow them to attack first depending on your needs. The bottom and the left buttons on the right hand side icons are for arts. From what I've seen, arts are fixed per character, and using an art starts a cooldown time for it. Once all characters in your party are done with their single actions, the enemy's turn then begins. So each character has a normal attack which you can activate by tapping the icon on the right. いや、ピアルデ。The bottom and the left buttons on the right hand side icons are for arts. From what I've seen, arts are fixed per character and using an art starts a cooldown time for it for a number of turns. So you get elixirs for leveling up your characters and refining stones for leveling up your memoria stones. Wait, there was no loading. At all. Uh, 
just a little bit, I guess. So on the upper right hand side of your of your battle screen is actually a, a hit counter, which acts as a multiplier for your damage. So the higher the number of hits your characters have done for this turn, the higher the preceding attacks will be. Of course that resets every turn. For those who will be playing the open beta soon, do not skip the tutorial. There actually are some good items that come with completing the tutorial. It plays like your usual gacha game. Adventure, after clearing a stage you get items, you gain gleamstones from completing stage missions. So there's actually no roaming around like in Raze. Okay, so prior to this, Cress was practicing with Kanata via the battle tutorial earlier, when a villager alerts them that a grandma from the general store just got her head bashed by someone, and they're blaming one of the kids from the orphanage that's managed by Kanata's family. Okay, so they didn't dub it. Which is reasonable because half these characters never got dubbed. で、そんな身の殺しは一瞬で後ろに回り込んだ。もう帰った方がいいよ。カジュアルミサワ。無理して通ろうとするなら、それでも無理だということを示さなきゃいけなくなる。私がね、あの子を。やめてくれ、ミ
Can you auto? Oh, you, you can auto battle on this. Cool. Yep. That's good. It means you can just start a chapter and leave it for a few minutes. For characters whom you've obtained SSR Memoria Stones, Mystic Arts are activated by tapping the button at the right when you're over the Lich God. Just four. Ah, the box kits are back. Uh, they're available in between stages. So that's the skit system. だから、There are also quests with fixed party members for story purposes. I get, oh, I forgot. So there's also a break gauge, mostly seen in boss fights. So depleting it will cause the enemy to lose a turn, and damage inflicted on them when they're stunned uh, in pieces. There's a little timer or a counter above the break gauge. So when that uh, timer reaches zero, the enemy will perform a very strong attack. なんだ今の攻撃。やっぱりクレス先生の言ってた。森の主ってこいつのことなの。あなたは立てるなら立ちなさい無理ならおとなしく寝ていて一緒に戦ってくれるいややれますそうかなら油断するな行くぞ So stage usually consists of two to three waves, mostly three waves at the latter part of chapter one. So if battles get too slow for you, you can fast forward it a bit by pressing the button at the upper left. There's also an option in the settings to turn off the animation for Mystic Arts, so it's just the cut in that comes in. Oh, 
悪い人間には見えない強いて言うなら理由はそれだけだ勝手に面倒ごとに飛び込まれてこっちはいい迷惑だけど不満なら無理に私に付き合わなくとも構わないぞ冗談でしょ私はあんたから決して目を離さないあんたが使命を果たし終えるまで絶対に理由をつけて逃げられると思わないことにそうだったなあのあ,あ Me too. I'll tell you well off of each other. So it's very exciting to see. Jiko Shokai ga mada datta na. Watashi wa Mira. Kanajo wa Velvet da. Kanata desu. Kanajo wa Mizera. Ono atari no hito ja nai desu yo ne. Futari wa dou shite konna tokoro ni? Saga shite iru yatsu ga ite na. Shikashi, mi ushinatte shimatta yo da. Mayo chatta n desu ka? よく見ると服もみつぼらしいし困ってるんですね。マイカー。よし、俺がなんとかしてあげますよ。何あんた。なんですか。よせ、ベルベット。それよりカナタ。何ミズラ。ウォードンが。あ、いない。逃げられたのか。魔物と戦ってる隙に。どうしよう。おーい、ミズラー。あとカナタ。ナッシュ話も聞かずにさっさと飛び出すなよカナタいい格好しようとしちゃってさナッシュ何かよ追いかける必要なんてないんだよゴードンがばあさんを殴ったところ俺のビジョンウォーブにしっかり映してあるんだ罪の投影かこのビジョンを世界中のやつらに転映すればそれならうんゴードンはトガビトになったんだ<笑><笑>まさか俺がトカビトトカビトだってことは来るんじゃないのあれがいい香り着いたよミゼラ君の大好きな白縫いの花の丘だ。連れてきてくれてありがとうカナタ本当は大人がいない時は入っちゃいけない場所なんだけどでもミゼラは本当にここが大好きなんだねうん白縫いの花はとても綺麗で強いから強い白縫いの花の茎は太くて丈夫だから踏まれても簡単にはダメになったりしないそれとねこの花にはもう一つ特性があるのもしかして発火性のこと確か白縫いの花は火をつけるとすごい勢いで燃えるんだよねそれが危ないからここは子供だけでしかいけないって言われてるしうんでもそれだけじゃない白縫いの花は自分から火を生み出すこともできると言われてるの自分から火を綺麗だ白縫いの花はとても綺麗だよねいやそうじゃなくていやいやそうなんだけど、うん、あのさミゼラ俺今まですごく楽しかったよミゼラと一緒にいられて遠くに行っちゃうけどまたきっと会えるよねてか会いに行くから絶対うん楽しみにしてるあのねかなた There are also a good number of illustrations accompanying the story, and they are all seriously beautiful and are a great addition to the story. Aside from that, there are also actually a good number of animated cutscenes, like the prologue we saw earlier. So, I'm not a good one. 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 <笑>カナタより俺の方が活躍してるぜリュークには負けないよお先にあフリーザーそう、チャレンジ報酬額
power run before we get these other ambitions. Oh yeah. So far I only have Kanata playable right now. After a bunch of stages, you eventually get um, the other characters from the main story. Um, this is without the mist they're in SR uh, rank and uh, without Mystic Arts. The legacy characters, you get them from the summon pool. So it takes a little bit. I'm trying to think of previous games where I start with one character or have one character for a long time. In this case, it's like it makes sense you're gonna free summon. Sarah, you played the tutorial and just fell a bit. But almost as soon as you got out, you got Roboro. Since Jerry, you had Miguel from the start. You start with both the brothers, and then you start with post tutorial with Malik. Post time skip. <sighs> I guess this is the luxury with guest characters, is you can start with just the main character, but not have to fight solo. It's also a luxury you get when you don't have to account for co-op play. Oh, so if you level up character affinities from using them in battle, you get additional things in their character room. This would include your voice clips, character episodes, and the like. You can also view their SSR illustrations, view the 3D models, change the, change the background, and add attachments. Oh, that's cute! Oh yeah! Attachments are back! I like the shades. That's what I really want from Bumble Tales. Ray's <laughs> oh really my want that. gosh! <laughs> yeah, that's definitely Luke. I can't take him seriously with a mustache, it's great. It fits though. What? It fits though. Uh, which hat? All three this of hat? them. Either hat works and the mustache. That's it. That's definitely the look. This is great. He's definitely <laughs> the ambassador. As you level up character affinities, you also unlock character episodes for the different characters. <laughs> あ、どうしよう。こんな<笑> あたしがその理由を排除するから。そうか。じゃあ、ハゲるしかねえな、カナタ。なんでそうなるのだって原因は前髪じゃん。ま、最悪、前髪だけ燃やして他残すって手もあるんじゃね。ダメだよ。失った
ダメじゃないよ何この会話なんでそうなっちゃったのあれについてこい<笑> Oh my gosh Thankfully, Dapper Luke is here to save the day. Save the day, The battle feels more like Asteria, but a lot faster. More animated? Yeah. Although you'll find a lot of Tails characters in the main story, you can find out more about how they fit into Crestoria's world through the side stories. Unfortunately, they're not voiced, but they are also worth the playthrough. So, uh, and unlike Race or the other crossover titles that cram all the legacy characters in, you know, they like, we got summoned to this world and all that, Crestoria actually just has the Tales characters already part of this world. They live here and have their own individual stories, as if they've always been in this world or they were born here. So this is only a short glimpse of the story. If uh, it has this light-hearted tone that Tails is known for, like so. この<笑><笑> なんで俺は酒を持たずにこんな足根またいのガキ二人ぶら下げて歩いてんだ。無駄し、無駄すぎる。おいカナタ、この無駄さを解消するためにお前今すぐ酒になれ。無茶言わないでよ。ふざけた
this is horrible. Oh my god, no! Okay, it gets worse. Uh, yeah. This seems oh fine. Oh my god. I'm kind of stunned by this. Because, like, Christoria's premise already the, the voting justice is already black mirror enough so like this is piling on what the f it's I'm not, sorry for this swear it's not word, a but fun this detail in a generic a fantasy world like Symphonia this is layers okay so this won't be a full playthrough but rather a play by play with highlights of the game we're thirsty for story. You can't spell Christoria without, you know. Storia? No. Other game features include raids, uh, wherein you battle a boss monster in varying difficulties. You can aid uh, other parties here or request aid from your friends. The arena is also available and has seasonal rankings. You earn points for ranking from fighting other players, or sometimes you get assigned CPU characters. So, extra memoria stones can be used to awaken either the character themselves or their memoria stone, awakening them as additional skills as well as increase in their stats. You can use materials. Uh, in order to ascend characters, which will increase their level limit. I have a question. Did you download it, I guess, from a local play store or from a Japanese one? Like, did you choose the display language? How did that work? Uh, I downloaded this from the English play store, so I think this is the English version. But if you'll notice, not all of the data is in English yet. Like, Rogin Bonus. Can you change the display language? Uh, nope. Oh, hey, maybe you are on the same server. Yeah, that's what I was wondering earlier. You downloaded it from the local play well, store, yet it... this build has Japanese players if the names are anything to go by. It is a beta test. We don't know what it, the full game is going to be like. That's true. And, oh, and we also have guilds. Oh, I'm so happy that they're using Carol's little guild dude. Good for him. Can I just say I love the game's music? Um, surprisingly, the game even has several vocal tracks. Really, really good to hear. It seriously feels like a console game that was just, you know, forcibly crammed into the smartphone. There are so many cutscenes. Yeah. I want to watch the opening at least 17 more times. I'm so thankful I don't play a lot of Mobage. This is going to take up so much of my time. Between this and Raze and Asteria, I... Mmm. That's pretty much our short playthrough through Tales of Crestoria. We, ser we seriously hope that people will enjoy this game. It was really worth the wait. The graphics are amazing. The story is wow. Music is top notch. And yeah, I guess that's it. And thank you again to Bandai Namco Entertainment for this wonderful opportunity. And again, I'm A745 or Abby. And thank you so much for thank you so much for watching with us. Bye guys. Bye. Bye. Oh Thank my you. god, I don't know how I'm gonna sleep yeah, after well, this. Thanks for hosting. It, it was a lot of things. Sweet dreams of Luke and his dapper outfit.